Hi, this is Adam with Wholesale Septic Supply. Today we're going to talk about septic risers, uh, how to find your uh, tank that you need to put a riser on, and uh, measurements, how to install them, uh, what measurements you want to use, how high they need to be, how wide they need to be, things like that. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to need to find your tank. So we found this tank. In certain states, uh, the offset is five feet, and most installers are going to put it five feet away from the house or maybe a little bit further but not too much further because it just it's more work let's say you want to put it 20 foot away now you got to do 20 foot of pipe tanks are deeper there's a lot more uh, issues that happen so generally they're pretty close usually you can find a, a clean out port next to your house and from that clean out port obviously the septic is pretty close to the uh, clean out port and then you can find it so once you once you find your tank and a lot of people don't know that's here uh, they'll think it's over here. It's usually right in line. So you can see how these are lined up. There's our pump tank, this is our aerobic chamber, and then not far away is the trash tank, okay? So when you're doing your, uh, when you're doing your uh, riser, let's say on a trash tank or any other tank, generally you wanna do this one first, okay? Generally this one's not needed. Some people do get two. Uh, it helps you have access to both sides of the tank. Uh, this one would be the most important because most of your uh, blockages and things like that happen either right here or right here so you can get a snake in there, unblock it, and uh, get everything going again. So that would be the spot that I would put it in, would be the entry to the tank. So you want to put it on the inlet side, uh, which would be this riser that's already here. So uh, now we're going to go over uh, measurements, uh, what needs to be done, how high you should have them, uh, and the reasons behind that. So once you, once you find your tank, uh, you're going to want to dig a spot bigger than the riser is, okay? Because your base is actually wider than the uh, diameter that you're, you're buying. So like a 24 inch is really the base is 30 inches, a 20 inch the base is 26 inches. So you're going to have to dig a wider, uh, wider area. Once you find your lid, you're going to have to measure across the opening, okay? So you want to measure this way. And the easiest way to do that is to remove the lid. When you put your riser on, you're not going to keep that on there. And you're going to measure across. So this one's 22 inches, okay? So you could do a 24, uh, or you could do a tw you could get away with a 20 inch because it's 26. So you measure across. If you measure across this way, you're going to mess up because that's only 16 inches, and that won't fit on there. So you have to measure across. On a round hole, a lot of them are, uh, you have round uh, plugs. You can just measure across and that's your, that's your diameter. But on a square one, you're going to want to measure across, you'll get your diameter, then you have your, then you have your uh, size. So another thing you're going to do, <clears throat> before we get too far ahead, is you're going to measure your height. So this says uh, it's about 9 inches to the top. Personally, I would go with a 12 inch riser. So you want a little bit more height on it than uh, you know level. Some people want to cover them up. It just gives you easier access. It's quicker to get to if there's a problem. Everybody can see them. Uh, in Texas, we have a real clay soil, at least down here in South Texas. Water tends to stay on top of the ground. We get a really heavy rain and go over the top of the lid. So we like to have about three, four inches sticking out on top. Um, and that, that's about what you see here. I mean, there's, yeah, there's about four or five inches right here. Uh, you can get real picky and get you know two inches if you want to. But uh, we just choose to go with one, one riser, and that's this one here. Uh, it's just 12 inches with the base, and then the top, and you get to 14. So it's low enough. Uh, it doesn't really you know, obstruct too much, and it's easy to get to. So once you get to that point, um, you're going to dig. Obviously, you're going to dig it up and measure before you order the riser. Don't take the plug out. Leave your plug in okay, until you get your, your kit. One important fact is you are going to remove the concrete lid. If you do not remove this concrete lid, when you go to open that up, a lot of times you won't be able to get the concrete lid out. So you don't need the concrete cap anymore. It's gone. So uh, you just you throw it away. You can do whatever you want with it, but this is going to take the place of that. Once you get your riser kit, <clears throat> what we like to do is you don't, we don't put them together piece by piece. So we don't do this and then put the riser on. We, we, we assemble everything first and then we put it on top of the tank. So <clears throat> we send tar and this sealant is really good. We just actually removed the riser in order to do this and it's very difficult to get off. So you're going to squirt this in this cavity here and this is to seal it so in case you get any 
uh, you know, you get water infiltration if you don't do this and it'll leak inside the tank. So you want to kind of put it liberally on there. Squeeze that all in. And this gives you a good seal right here. Flip this around. Don't get this on you either because it it don't come off. So it's gonna be wearing nice clothes. So you flip this around, then these little tabs here line up with these, and that's where your screws go. So you can see, just set that on there, little side, and there it is. So it, it's set on there. So then you get your screws. We send a bunch of them, don't lose them, they're stainless. And you just start putting this thing together. So we set it in. And what's nice about the tough type, we like over the other ones is the plastics it seems to be a little bit uh, softer and um, the screws don't strip out as much. So, okay, so you got everything set up. You're gonna flip this over, all right? So you flip this over. We might not have enough in here. And then you just apply this all over the bottom, okay? You just squirt this all over. And you'll have enough to put a, a, good, a bunch of it on there. Once this cures, I mean, it's almost, I couldn't pry it up with a shovel earlier. So uh, it's really on there. So some of these come with two. Some come with three, depending on how many risers you get. Kind of figured it out, so you should get the correct amount and get enough. This makes it really easy, and it gives you a good seal, too. That's the important thing. It's You can use liquid nails too. Let's say you don't get one from us. Uh, you can get liquid nails and use it. Just liquid nails in the winter is something else. Uh, getting it out if you're in a cold climate. Not a lot of people buy these in the winter. They don't want to be out digging in the snow. Um, kind of a hassle. So that's it. I mean, you don't have to use it all, but you can just liberally put it on there. Um, Take your riser, you flip it over, and you kind of line it up on here. And there you go. So you set it down, and then you don't have to screw down your lid right now, but that's basically it. So that's why you want to take your, your plug out too, because you can kind of see the ring kind of gets close, and you wouldn't really be able to get it in there. And what happens is over time that concrete kind of settles in and it locks together and it almost impossible to get them out so you don't want to leave it in there all the tough tights have a gasket in them so uh so all the manufacturers used to do that because of the plastic shortage some of them didn't but these all have gaskets so they're all sealed they're tight put that lid on and the reason is you don't want a bunch of dirt going in there grab your shovel and just start backfilling it so when you backfill it, I like to kind of backfill evenly because the uh, tar isn't uh, cured yet, but we've done thousands of these and as far as installing them, and this is the best way we've found to do this. Step around it. Kind of compacting it all the way around. Square cuts right here. Let the dirt kind of fill in. Push it in evenly. Give it a nice tight fit. And now it's nice and sealed. You've got a new riser system. You can see from the shovel here. This isn't the most level, but that's about how much clearance is going to come from you're going to have overage and that's plenty so 
about four inches right there. If you come from the top, maybe about five with this top piece. That ensures that what happens is you put them too low. Dirt gets in the screws and the dirt comes up over this. Then you got to clean all that off to get them out. So that's why we like them a little bit elevated. Anyways, uh, that's how you install a riser, how you measure for it, which one to pick, um, and just go from there. If you guys want them buried under the ground, you can have them buried. If you don't want to see them, that's fine. It's just our preference, how we like to do them. And what we've found over the years is easiest to service. So give us a call, click the like and subscribe button. That's it. Hope you have a great day.